This video will show you how to find the prime form of a set of pitches or pitch classes. If two groups of notes are related to each other by transposition or inversion, then they will have the same prime form. The technical way of saying that the two pitch classes are related by transposition or inversion is that they are T and I equivalent. The prime form of a pitch class set is like its default format. By choosing the transposition or inversion of the set that is the most compact, any transposition or inversion of that set will also reduce to that same compact form, showing that they are T and I equivalent. So let's learn how to derive a set's prime form and see if these two sets are T and I equivalent. Let's start by finding the prime form of the first set, A, D, E, F. The first step is to place the pitch classes on a chromatic clock face. Let's turn these note names into pitch class integers, starting with A. A is 9, so we'll put it at 9 o'clock on the clock face. D is 2, so that goes at 2 o'clock. E is 4, so we'll place that 2 hours later on the clock. And F is 5, so one more dot will go on the next tick mark. Now that we've got a good visualization of the set in chromatic space, we must look at each possible starting note for the prime form and count semitones from the first note to the last note of the set. That way we'll be able to see which starting place will give us the most compact version of the set. Because we're looking at both transposition and inversion, we need to do this both in the clockwise and counterclockwise directions. Let's look at how to do this with our A, D, E, F set. It doesn't matter where you start, because we'll make sure to include every possible starting place. Let's begin with the A at 9 o'clock, and count clockwise to the last note that you see marked with a dot before coming back around to the A. Starting at 9 and going clockwise, where is the last pitch class? It's at 5 o'clock. Now how many semitones around the clock is 5 from 9? It's 8 half steps. Working 9 to 5 is an 8 hour shift after all. So we'll write an 8 next to that starting place's arrow to keep track. Next we choose another starting place and do the same thing. Let's continue with the clockwise direction and start now on D at 2 o'clock. In this case, the last note we come to before making a full circle back around to D is the A that we used as our starting note before. So how many semitones is it from 2 clockwise around to 9? It's 7, so we'll write down 7 and keep going. Next you get to try this yourself, starting with the E at 4 o'clock and going clockwise. Pause the video, count semitones, and see if you get the answer that I'm about to reveal. You should have gotten 10. If you got 11, you may have counted E as 1 instead of saying 1 as you move to the next tick mark after the starting pitch class. Try again with the F at 5. Pause the video if you need a moment to count. You should have gotten 11 for this one, since it is nearly all the way around the clock to the last note. Now that we've done all the possible starting pieces in the clockwise direction, we need to do the same thing going counterclockwise around to the last PC. Let's start at 9 o'clock again, going counterclockwise this time. In this case, the last PC is seven semitones counterclockwise around the circle. You try the next one starting at five o'clock and counting around to the last PC in the counterclockwise direction. Have you found the answer? Did you get eight? Let's keep going. Starting at four, what do you get? This time, you should get 11. And our last starting place goes counterclockwise from 2 o'clock. For this one, you should get 10. Now we're ready for step 3. The most compact form of the set 
has the smallest interval from its first pitch class up to its last, so we'll rule out any that didn't get the smallest number in step two. Then on the remaining starting places, we'll do the same process, only using the next to last pitch class instead of the last. In the ADEF set, which of the first to last distances that we wrote down is the smallest? It's the sevenths of which there are two. So we'll get rid of the rest and only consider these two for this step. Now let's measure from the first to the next to last note for each of these two starting places and directions. Starting at two o'clock and going clockwise, the next to last pitch class is at five o'clock. Pause now and count the semitones. You should have gotten three, which we'll write next to this starting places, seven. Now we'll go counterclockwise from nine. How many semitones to the penultimate pitch class? The penultimate pitch class is at four, and it is five semitones away. In step four, we again remove all but the most compact option in the previous step. Sometimes there will still be more than one starting place with the same distances between both the first and last and first and next to last pitch classes. When this happens, just continue the process until you find a winner or you run out of previous notes to measure to. In the set that we're working on, there's clearly a winner since three is smaller than five. So we'll remove the starting place at nine o'clock and we have found our winning starting place. So now we just have to tabulate the results. To do this, we use the starting place as zero for a new numbering of our clock. Number zero, one, two, three, etc. in the direction of the arrow. The pitch classes will now have new pitch class integers, which will spell out its prime form. So start at the marked starting place and put a zero there and count up in the direction of the arrow until you reach the last pitch class. And in ascending order, starting with zero, write the new numbers next to each of the dots. In this case, we get zero, two, three, and seven. This is your prime form. In order to answer our original question, we also have to find the prime form of the second set to see if it is the same as the prime form of the first. But wait, what are the pitch class integers of the second set's pitches? C is zero, D is two, E flat is three, and G is seven. So I've already put this one in prime form. I did this to save some time for finding prime forms of different sets. So are these two pitch class sets equivalent under transposition or inversion? Yes, they are. This means that there is either a T or an I operation that describes how these are related. How do you figure out what that is? Remember that you simply need to add or subtract the pitch class integers of the corresponding notes in the two sets. How do you know which pitch class in the first set to add or subtract from which pitch class in the second? We know which dots on the clock face correspond to the other based on where our starting place and direction for the prime form was in each. Remember that for ADEF, the prime form started at two o'clock and went clockwise. And because the CD E flat G set was already in prime form, the prime form just starts at zero and goes clockwise. So these are the corresponding pitch classes in the set. How do you know whether it's a transposition or an inversion? If they go in the same direction, either both clockwise or both counterclockwise, it's a transposition. If one goes clockwise and the other goes counterclockwise, it's an inversion. Since these are both clockwise, it's a transposition, so we can subtract. Zero minus two mod 12 is 10. So A, D, E, F to C, D, E flat, G is T10, or 10 semitones higher. Or if the C, D, E flat, G is literally or conceptually first, 
and therefore transformed into ADEF, you subtract 2 minus 0 and get T2. You can check your work by continuing to add or subtract corresponding pitches following the prime form's direction. So here you subtract 2 and 4 and so on to make sure that you're getting the same index of transposition. Let's practice finding the prime form of a new example. This time we'll try a five note collection, D, F sharp, G sharp, A, B flat. Here's the PC integer cheat sheet if you need it. Pause the video and see if you can draw a clock face with the dots in the correct locations for this set. So D is two, F sharp is six, G sharp is eight, a is 9, and B flat is 10. Recall what we do in step 2, measuring the distance around to the last PC for each possible starting place in both directions. Draw two arrows for each dot on your clock, like you see here, and then see if you can put the correct number on each of the 10 arrows. Pause the video now to try it. Here are the first to last distances that you should have gotten. Pause the video again now to check your work against mine. Now we need to break the ties between the starting places with the smallest number of semitones from first to last. We do this by measuring from the first to next to last for the remaining starting places. The smallest number that I see here is 8. In this case, there aren't just two starting spots with the smallest number from first to last. There are four. So we'll remove all but the four eights, and we'll measure the distance from the first to next to last for each. Pause the video now and see if you can get the correct four numbers to go next to the eights. Here is what you should have gotten. Two fours, a six, and a seven. Since we have two fours, it looks like we'll still have a tie in step four, where we'll have to look at the anti-penultimate pitch class to decide between the two fours. So first, we'll remove the six and the seven arrows. Now you're measuring from first to third from last for each of the fours. Pause again and figure out the two numbers to add to your clock face. Here is the answer. One of them is a three, and the other is a two. So it looks like we've broken the tie. Now we'll start at our winning starting place and renumber our clock in the direction of the winning arrow, starting with zero. First, let's get rid of the runner up. Pause now and try to write down the correct prime form before I go over the solution. Here is how you should have renumbered your clock. This gives us the prime form 0, 1, 2, 4, 8 for this set. Are you ready to try one on your own? Here is another example. This time, we'll go back to just four PCs. Write down these four pitch classes. You'll be putting them on the clock face and then trying to find the prime form of this set. Here is a list of the five steps to help you. Pause the video and see if you can find the prime form for the G, A flat, D, E flat set on your own. We'll go over this one step by step so that if you made any mistakes along the way, you can see where your problem is and fix it for the next practice example. This is where your dots should be on the clock. Be extra careful with this first step because if you get this wrong, it's a guarantee that your prime form will be wrong. If you make a little mistake later, you might still get the correct answer, but putting the dots on the wrong tick marks will ruin the whole rest of the process. Let's see how you did at step two. We'll start arbitrarily at eight o'clock and go clockwise first. For this one, the last PC is at seven and it is 11 semitones away. Next, let's start at two and go clockwise. The last PC from here is at eight and it is six semitones away. Continuing on to 3 o'clock, you should have gotten 11 semitones all the way around to 2 o'clock. And then the 7 around to the 3 is 7 semitones. 
in the counterclockwise direction, the 8 around to the 2 is 6 half steps. The 7 back around to the 8 is 11. The 3 around to the 7 is 7 half steps. And the 2 all the way around to the 3 is 11. Next, we find the starting places with the smallest number and work to break the tie between those. In this case, the smallest number here is 6, so we'll take away the rest and only focus on the two 6s. Starting with the clockwise arrow at 2 o'clock, you should have measured this to the penultimate pitch class at 7, which is 5 semitones around. The other starting place is at 8, and goes counterclockwise, measuring to the next to last pitch class at 3. You should have counted 5 semitones for this one as well. Looks like we've still got a tie here, so we'll continue with the third to last to try to break the tie. This time, let's start looking clockwise at 2 o'clock and measure from the first to the third to last, which happens to be the closest dot in that direction, and it's only one semitone away. Likewise, starting at 8 and going counterclockwise, the next PC is also only one semitone away. We've run out of different notes in the set to measure to in the specified direction, and we haven't broken the tie. So either starting place will give the correct answer. Let's renumber our clock face and read off the prime form. I'll just arbitrarily choose the clockwise arrow and write my zero there counting upward with each tick mark. Reading off the new numbers for each dot, your prime form should be 0, 1, 5, 6. You'll get the same answer starting at 8 and going counterclockwise, which means this set is inversionally symmetrical. If you invert it, it remains the same, or maybe just becomes a transposition of its starting form. Here is a seven note collection. Larger sets are more difficult simply because there are more opportunities to make little mistakes that throw the whole thing off. Give it a try and see how you do. So here's how it looks on the clock face. In step two, you should have 14 arrows, each with a number on it. Here are the arrows, and here are the numbers you should have for each. Take a second to check your work against this to see if you made any mistakes. In this case, we'll be removing all but two of the 14 starting places and directions. Nine is the smallest number, so we'll focus just on those for this step. The next to last pitch for both of these is seven semitones away, so we've got to keep going to break the tie. We'll look at the third to last note next and see if that helps us. The third to last note for each of these starting places is 6, so we still haven't broken the tie. The fourth to last note, counterclockwise from the arrow at 10 o'clock, is 4 semitones away, while the fourth to last note, clockwise from the arrow at 1 o'clock, is 5 semitones away. So now we finally found a winner. Renumbering the clock starting at 10 and going counterclockwise, we can then read off the new numbers of the dots. Your prime form should be 0234679. Here are the steps again so that you can have them for future reference. With a little practice, you should be able to find a prime form without using this list. But the list will help you in the distant future if you ever have to find a prime form and you're out of practice.